Okay. So let's talk about the midterm. And here I will take all the questions. I appreciate you guys letting me being all right with me being a little brief with the last section there. Um, let's go through what our midterm is going to look like. So you guys have access to this midterm study guide. Um, it's, it's a little over a page long, not too bad. Um, I've got the weeks written here. I think this is right. I've moved a couple things around. So this should basically be an order of my slides, but some of this might be one week forward or back. So I need you guys to be able to fill out the five element chart, right? In theory, this is what we're going to be starting off the semester with. Um, I'm just adding in a bunch of multiple choice questions here, like what's the season of metal? So fairly basic stuff, fairly introductory stuff. Um, but I need you guys to be able to do that. I need you to be able to fill in the making chi, making blood, and making fluid charts in their entirety. This is also in week one. This should also be reviewed from last semester. So lungs and spleen come together, produce da chi and gu chi that goes to the chest, makes the zong chi, goes to the heart, the spark from the kidney, makes the zheng chi, which turns into wei chi and yin chi, right? Those charts are in the slides from week one. So you can reference those. Um, I want you to know the court of the body. I want you to know which organs are which officials within the court. Heart's emperor, that sort of a thing. Uh, I want you to know the six evils and their modifiers. So that's just what are the six evils. When See, I'm sorry, Peter. Is this posted? Yes, I'm... very much so. <laughs> it's oh. in the chat, it's on the Moodle, and it's on the Slack. Oh, I don't, I don't know how I can't find it. Okay, I'll keep looking. Um, if you I go didn't... into week seven on the Moodle, then in week seven, if you click required reading and resources, you should be able to find it. Hmm. I don't have that tab. The tab is missing. It could be like on the general um, front screen under resources. It's in the chat. Okay. It's in the chat too. All right, I'll 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 figure it out. Thank you. Yep. If, if you still have problems, just email me and I'll send you a copy. Um, okay. So this is one of the places where I just miss being able to hand you guys pieces of paper in a class. Um, so I need to know the differences between heat and dry. Um, this is one of these things that uh, was brought up in one of the um, department meetings a little while ago that people keep getting this wrong on boards and comps. Um, you can have dryness without heat. So a person can have dry skin without redness, for example. The difference between these two is, yeah, heat tends to cause dryness. Dryness tends to come with heat, but they don't have to be together. So you can have damp heat and you can have cold dry, for example. And the difference is general whether or not redness is present with the dryness. OK. Um, so I want you to know. Uh, and all of this is multiple choice, by the way, in case you're worried about the depth at which you have to know this. Um, I need you to know uh, the six stages in order. We covered that in week two. We reviewed it briefly last week as well. So that's Tai Yang, Yang Ming, Xiao Yang, Tai Yin, Xiao Yin, Jui Yin. I need you to know those. And uh, a couple of the basic symptoms. So if I say pathogen trapped in latency, if I say four bigs, if I say common cold, I say vomiting of roundworms. I would want you to know which one that is. So basically one concept for each one. I want you to know the Wen Bing, the four levels and the basic symptoms for each one. So that'd be Wei, Qi, Yin, and Shui. And I would want you to know that the Wei looks like the common cold, but kind of hot. And the Qi looks like the four bigs. And the uh, Yin looks like neurological issues. And the Shui looks like bleeding disorders. All of this will be recorded, so you can reference this online also after this if you're frantically taking notes. Um, I want you to be able to differentiate a wind cold versus a wind heat based on symptoms. So wind cold, in this case, you're not going to have sweating, and it's going to be start with tightness in the back of the neck, whereas wind heat starts with a tickle in the throat and comes with sweating. Uh, I want you to be able to um, figure out what the modifiers look like. So, and 
what they add based on symptoms. So uh, damp heat, I'm not exactly sure what I meant by that. Um, oh, wind cold with dampness. What would it look like if dampness gets added in? Just We just went over it. It's gonna look heavier, stickier, and dirtier, right? So you might expect to see some mucus coming out of the person's nose if they have a wind cold with dampness. You might expect their head to be heavy. Um, you might expect, yeah, that's, that's enough right there. Uh, difference between wind-based invasion and non-wind-based invasion. So I might ask you again, something like, which of the following is infectious? And remember that a cold invasion just means that you're in cold weather and that you got a, and that the cold got in you and a wind cold means that you caught something, that you're actually sick. One is just environmental damage and the other is disease. Uh, difference between external and exterior, internal versus interior pathology and pathogen. Um, I don't care about this one very much, but this is another one of those people keep getting this wrong on comps and boards. So you, external and internal refer to where the pathogen comes from. Exterior and interior refer to where the pathogen is. So you can have internal dampness that manifests on the skin as eczema. It's manifesting on the exterior, but it's an internal pathogen because it was generated in the internally, it's an internal pathogen, but because it's manifesting on the exterior, it's manifesting on the exterior. Whereas getting a wind cold invasion is an external pathogen that manifests on the exterior, unless it lasts a long time and goes into say the tie-in, and then it's an exterior pathogen on the interior. That makes sense? It's pedantic, it's annoying. I don't, I'm not a fan of it, but yeah, you should know that. I will have one question on that subject. Um, what's summer heat? Be able to answer a multiple choice question about it. Uh, three sources of disease and differentiation. Oh, internal, external, and miscellaneous. I just want you to be able to show that you basically know what the difference is. So if I say, if a patient's poisoned, is this an example of internal, external, or miscellaneous disease? And I want you to be able to tell me that it's miscellaneous. If I say a patient got, has long-term anger issues that have resulted in liver fire, what is this an example of? I want you to be able to tell me that that's internal disease. Uh, that's week two. Week three. Uh, I need you to know um, how emotions move chi. I made a point of making sure that you knew that from my perspective and the perspective of most of the practitioners I respect, anger is chi moving upwards, for example. But for all exams, anger makes the chi move up. Shock scatters the chi. It's those sorts of statements. I wanna make sure you know those. Again, there's, there's slides for every single one of these things. So you just have to review what we've covered so far don't necessarily have to watch the videos. Um, and these are pretty much in order of where they, where this information is in the slides. So as you're going through week three, this is gonna come before this in the slides, for example. Um, what does the phrase all emotions affect the heart mean? I want you to be able to answer that question. Um, what does it mean functionally that emotions scatter the shen? Why does that matter? Why do we care about that? Um, probably not going to do this extra credit because uh, it's a little confusing how to put in um, short answer stuff, but we'll figure out extra credit for you guys. Uh, probably as a take home thing. So, what's my beef with Machiocha's understanding of emotions? Just said it, it's separate. Um, emotions cause chi too. Yep. Why do we care so much about emotions? I, I want to I want you to be able to show that you understand how emotions create internal disease. Know and be able to describe the characteristics of emotions. So I want you to be able to show that you understand the difference between, say, um, grief and fear within a Chinese medical context. Uh, know and be able to describe uh, know the list of activities and what they damage. Oh, thanks, Carrie. That's 
fits. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> um, so uh, there's a slide in week three that says you know, excessive lying down injures the chi, excessive stand, et cetera. I want you to know all of those. I, I don't have a particular care about whether or not you know those, but those are, you'll see those on boards and comps. So I want to make sure you're ready for that. From week four, uh, I want you to be able to demonstrate a knowledge of the factors involved in creating chi. So uh, from week one, I asked you to be able to recreate the chart. And here, I want to be able to ask you questions about that chart and have you be able to answer them. Like, would, um, yeah. Just make, make, sure, make sure that chart makes sense to you. Uh, explain the difference between full and empty or deficient heat. So what's the difference between excess and deficient heat? Uh, be able to identify and explain relative versus absolute imbalances last week, right? Um, we'll have a few questions on that. Explain treatment strategies for various yin and yang imbalances. For example, why don't you drain deficient heat out of a person, which is like kind, you kind of do, but like at this level, why don't you? <laughs> be able to um, explain uh, the relationship and interactions between Wei and Xie uh, We're going to see whether I can, uh, normally I use some of those little bar graphs to ask those questions. Like in this case, does the patient get sick or not? In this case, what happens? So we'll see how well that translates to online quiz making, but um, it would be nice to have you be able to answer those. Uh, and this is just a reiteration of the earlier thing. If I give you symptoms, I want you to be able to tell me the uh, stage or level that they're at. Real basic level of this, nothing, nothing fancy, just make sure you know those. Um, and then the rest of this is from this week. Yeah, good. So uh, about, about a third of the quiz is gonna be from what we covered today and last week this one set of slides. I want you to really be able to show me that you understand the internal pathogens. So I wanna be able to ask you symptoms about them. I wanna be able to ask you what type of treatment we use here. Um, I want you to know the causes of blood stasis. I want you to know the causes of internal wind. I just picked two of them. The other ones you, can, you don't have to know. I want you to know what the symptoms of chi stagnation are. I want you to know the symptoms of dampness and be able to tell the difference between damp heat and damp cold and damp phlegm. Uh, yeah, Leong, it's posted two comments above you in the chat. You can just download it right there. Okay. Um, and I also want you to make, I want you to be able to show that you understand the difference between good heat and the general concept of heat and heat as a pathogen. Um, I'm, I would like you to memorize this phrase, pathological substances do not perform physiological functions. The number of times that this has read, run through my head and been beneficial in my practice has been huge. Again, credit to Jason Ginsburg. Um, great phrase, very important. I want you to know that. Um, and I want you to know the difference between substantial and insubstantial phlegm. Not at a deep level, at the level of if a patient has nodules, which one is it? Uh, I'm also going to be asking you a couple of questions that involve multi-stage integration of the five element chart. So for example, a uh, one level question would be if a patient has skin issues, which organ would that be associated with? A multi-level question might be, if a patient has skin level, skin issues, which season is that likely to arise in? So trying to make, not just connect one thing to the element, but to the element and then to a secondary thing as well. Um, and I want you to be able to recognize yin and yang pairs in the body. So qi and blood being a yin and yang pair, yin and wei being a yin yang pair, Insubstantial and substantial phlegm being a yin yang pair, heat and cold being a yin yang pair, damp and dry being a yin yang pair. We have a ton of these throughout the body. And thinking in terms of those things is helpful. 
Um, and I also want you to know the basic functions of the organs, which should be reviewed from FCM1, like stomach is in charge of rotting and ripening, skin is in charge of transforming and transporting, small intestines in charge of separating clear from the turbid. We're gonna go way deeper into all those concepts right after the midterm, but yeah, I want you to know that. And that's it, that's the whole midterm. Sounds like a ton of stuff, but um, this is just a very detailed review sheet. There's nothing on the, the exam that isn't on here, and there are things on here that I'm not gonna have on the exam. Um, I've gotta redo the exam to make it work with the online thing, and I'll be figuring that out uh, around 4.30. Um, yeah, that's the story. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, that was the other thing I was planning on doing. Thank you for the reminder. So let's, um, let me pull up a quiz. Okay, let me, uh, let me share a different screen here. Nope, that's the wrong one. Okay, so this would be an example of some of the um, quizzes that we're going to be working off of. So uh, on a certain level, every organ is involved in chi production, but at the same time, some organs are more involved than others. So uh, feel free to just type that in in the chat. Which of the following is not involved in chi production? I'm also trying to toss a decent number of these not relate these questions that have somewhat odd wording in because you're gonna get these on boards and comps, but I'm gonna try to highlight the not when I do. So type in the chat, which of the following is not involved in chi production within the chi production diagram. There you go. Thank you, Kalia. Large intestine. What type of chi do the lungs produce? I believe there are more than just one. I think there's other people in this class. Terry, you're doing great, but thank you. Sorry, and keep posting, Kyria. It's not, yeah. <laughs> but everyone, feel, feel free to type. Now, which of the following is a young pathogen? Fire, good, good. What pathogenic chi is called? Yep. Defensive chi is called? Good. Write the six stages in order. This is what you would be getting in class if we were doing this in class. Write the four. Ooh, that bad people. Four levels in order. What is deficient heat? How is it different from excess heat? Again, not quite sure how we're going to translate some of that into online. If Wei Chi is much stronger than Xie Chi, what will happen? Feel free to write an answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, patient won't get sick. Good. If patient has very little Wei Chi and strong Xie Chi, what do we expect to see? Very little Wei Chi. Patient will get sick. What sort of symptoms are we going to see with this patient? Are they going to have a lot of symptoms or very few symptoms? They're going to get sick, but when they get sick, it's not going to be very extreme looking, despite the pathogen being strong. Good. And pull up another quiz here.
Okay. So Joy makes the chi. Rise. Ascend. Um, yep. Uh, no, sorry. Joy makes the chi slow. This one would be matching normally. Um, so I had a request to post the quizzes in Moodle for review. I will post the quizzes in the Moodle and on the Slack and hopefully people will be able to get them. Grief makes the chi. This is D in the upper left there too. Uh, the answer is D, which is here on the next page. Sorry. Dissolve. The fear making the chi descend. But you couldn't really see D, so that's kind of on me, right? Um, shock makes the chi. Yep, good. Scatter. Oh, now we're testing whether or not I remember these off the top of my head. Uh, excessive sitting damages the... I should know this off the top of my head, right? Yeah, excessive sitting damages the chi. Excessive lying down damages the... So the idea here would be that you're given a tissue that it damages and I want you to be able to connect it to the organ as well. Excessive use of the eyes damages the... That one's relatively easy. I think excessive lying down damages the heart, but I would have to double check that. Again, this is not something I use clinically. But excessive use of the eyes damages the blood and the liver. Pretty sure. Everything static eventually leads to disharmony. So there I would normally just be asking people to write a little bit about the idea in Chinese medicine of uh, movement and life being really synonymous. Um, and, you know, number nine is any questions like this are pretty open-ended, like as long as you can show me that you've thought a little bit about the subject, like what is rumination? What is chi nodding? How do you understand that? This, these, a lot of this is experiential, like you want to be able to associate your own experiences with these emotions, with what you felt in your body, with what patients are then going to share with you. So rumination causes the chi to nod. What does that mean? For you, what, what what would that mean for a patient? Uh, what's the difference between shock and fear? Yeah, the, these are the sort of quizzes that I'm going to be asking. Yeah, all this stuff is in there. I mean, some of this is like I I, I write a little bit in the slides about the diff, about what shock is and what fear is. But anytime I'm saying something like "tell me in your own words," if you can write something that is technically a paragraph on the subject, you're probably getting credit for it. As long as you're not wildly factually inaccurate, I'm looking to see that you're. I'm I'm trying to make you work in real time to think through these ideas. So this is not a "did you read the right slide?" sort of a question. This is a can you think on the spot about this question? Because that's what you actually do clinically. Um, yeah. All right, that helpful, everybody?